You're watching Telecom TV from the 2018 TIPS Summit in London. I'm joined now by Rajesh Mishra, who is co-founder and CTO of Paolo Wireless. Rajesh, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Paolo Wireless has been very active of late. Tell me more about what you've been working on. Yeah. So first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, yesterday was a great day uh, on the stage here at TIP Summit. Uh, you know, uh, we, we got great recognition from Vodafone as well as Telefonica and also a few other operators like MTN. They mentioned that they're working with us. So we've been innovating on open RAN space, but unlike uh, only people where they only focus on technology, we've been actually looking for end-to-end -end picture with a total cost of ownership centric approach so that's the area where we've been innovating a lot not just technology but looking at how we can solve the problem and lower the cost of deployments energy you've been selected by Vodafone and Telefonica as one of the lead vendors for their open run RFI what exactly does that entail so we've been selected by both Vodafone and Telefonica in an open run RFI in all the G's as well as end-to-end -end solution for deployment because we've been doing early trials with both of them in different areas and they both independently and collaboratively selected us to lead in multiple countries for their next level deployments in our open RAN RFI. And this solution is based on general purpose processing? Yeah, so what open RAN is all about is it's about trying to disaggregate the various components but not by adding complexity. So part of that is solving the problem where you're not stuck with proprietary hardware or proprietary solutions, but at the same time, look at the end-to-end -end view. So, you know, so this is something what we have done is brought in a general purpose and really off-the-shelf solution, including the software and hardware, all into a central place, place in a nice integrated way and there's, there's a critical piece. A lot of times when you disaggregate, you have just too many components that increase the cost. And Volt is a great example, where IMS, there were just way too many boxes and look where we are. Uh, it's very complex to deploy. And Open RAN, we are trying to be very careful while we're disaggregating and bringing the general purpose hardware into the mix but we are still looking end to end. So we are solving and reducing the total cost of ownership. That's something we are really pr very proud and where we are innovating. Where does automation fit? Yes, so a big part of this is, uh, if you look at the network, where the costs are, actually hardware is a very small piece of cost. Of course, you want to reduce there too. It's all about deployment. A lot of times there are system integrators. They have a vested interest because that's kind of the ongoing thing. So part of our automation, part of our bigger view of the network, that's where actually we really shine and we are able to take a bigger cost out of the network. And it covers all the Gs leading up to 5G and beyond. Yeah, it's all the Gs, you know, and any other Gs in future coming in or if somebody really wants to go back to 1G, which I hope not, will be there. You know, we also do Wi-Fi as well. You know, we have a great Wi-Fi offering as well, which kind of sometimes doesn't get talked about in G's. <laughs> How do we go about changing the business model for CSPs? Actually, uh, it's, very, um, it's really amazing to see how it changes life of the end user. You know, we, you know yesterday we saw some of the Peru videos uh, from Mayutel where we've been deploying um, with Telefonica. And it's just amazing how excited people are, the local entrepreneurs who is deploying them and the end users, they are doing a 3G, 4G, 2G data and voice on it, right? So it's changing life in a true way and actually it's boosting economies, local economies, right? So, and it's really gratifying. So when you lower the cost, the total cost of ownership, it really changes life and that's the biggest right, um, reward anybody can get when you see the smile on people's face, really, right? And that, that's really what I personally look for, that's what our company looks for really trying to change life when people can deploy these things and benefit. Ultimately, everything we do in the network is about connecting the customer, the real people, connecting the unconnected. Uh, it is, it is, but at the end of the day, it's about, you know, wireless connectivity is a fundamental human right, right? So you want to connect people, right? You don't want to discriminate just because they are a rural remote, that doesn't mean they don't deserve 4G, right? They're probably, the, they'll be the biggest beneficiary of those technologies, right? So this is about connecting the unconnected and I'm really grateful to Facebook 
Telefonica, Vodafone, MTN, and others where they are actually leading the way to do these things and you know, can't be you know, greater time than now to execute. Your solution features very low power consumption. Yeah, so you know, when you deploy these equipments, there are a variety of areas. Some, they're pure solar power based, right? So you want to be a very cost effective, not only the price wise, but also the power, because that's part of the total cost of ownership, right? But at the same time, if you're stuck in a 2G only land, then that gets you only so far, right? So what you want to do is you want to have an upgradable path to 2G, 3G, 4G, and even 5G on these things while you're starting low, but as these areas get developed, you want to be ready. You don't want to go and reinvent and replace these things. Just add more capabilities on those equipment. So again, starting from ultra low power, completely off-grid sites, upgradable all the way to all the Gs are really important for those communities. So telcos can evolve at their own pace, upgrading as and when situations dictate. So the beauty of the open RAN work we've been doing and the communities have been doing, you don't have to wait for all the Gs to deploy. You can start with the lowest G and keep incrementally adding any other Gs whenever the time is right. You can start with 2G and go to 5G, the same equipment, or start with 3G, go to 4G, or start with 4G, go to 5G. That's the work open RAN communities have been doing today. And this leads to low OPEX. That keeps OPEX down, no changes of the equipment, right? So that just uh, future proof, uh, because when people are deploying in these areas, they don't want to, you know, they're already constrained. You don't want to be replacing the equipment there. So that's one of the biggest criteria they look for, that all the G's all the time. And you've also worked recently with MTN in Africa and 5G Rural First in the UK. So we, we've been working with MTN, again, trying to solve this problem for Africa. Uh, we are, you know, uh, yesterday uh, the CTO mentioned that we are working with them, but uh, I think that's how much I can talk about that one. And uh, we, we've been also working in, here in UK for a 5G rural, and that's been great work. And thanks to the government organizations and all the private public collaboration, where you know, we, are, we are breaking new grounds. And I honestly believe 5G will be more impactful in rural than in urban areas, because you know, internet, people have it, they have experienced it. They want to do more, that's great. But the, when it comes to changing life, rural is the place where you know, it's, it'll really shine. You know? So that, that's something I'm really looking forward to. It. Rajesh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.